this episode is full of drama. Oh, I just really wasn't expecting that. With a side of Swiss cheese. By the end of this, I'm hoping to bring someone to the altar. But before I do that, I have to hang out in Malta. So bad. Most importantly, we get to see Sydney and Maria go on their romantic two-on-one date where only one will survive. And now I have to go on a date with her. I'm just sick of constantly being disrespected. I'm sick of it. How am I going to be able to, to be comfortable? And by the way, all the girls get hit in the face with sausages. This is Fleek Reality, here with your piping hot serving of reality and everything you need to know about the jam-packed season 28, episode four of The Bachelor. We start with Jesse Palmer informing the women that they are going to Malta and they lose their freaking minds, despite not knowing where Malta is in the world at all. Never been to Europe. Malta's in Europe, right? Is Malta Europe? Malta's Europe, okay. As Joey walks bow-legged through Sanglia, Malta, he lets us know that he feels that his wife is in Malta right now. I feel like my wife is here in Malta currently, which is crazy to say, but it's true. And is it crazy that I believe him? Yes, it is because 99% of bachelors don't end up with their final pick. After the women scream at the top of their lungs about their hotel room in Malta. They receive a date card that reveals Lexi got the one-on-one -on -one date card in Malta, and the women look like they are gonna throw up. On their date in Malta, Lexi chooses for her outfit an asymmetrical tube top, whitish bootleg jeans, and sporty white shoes. Luckily, her face is gorgeous, so Joey can just concentrate on that while they spend the day together. The group date card comes oh, I don't know. <gasps> oh. <laughs> when I hear the knock at the door, I immediately tense up. I'm thinking there's a date card for sure. And by process of elimination, Sydney and Maria are going on the two-on-one. After the group date card came, we realized that Sydney and Maria aren't on there, and a two-on-one is coming their way. So the drama definitely did not stay in LA. Talk about creating drama for TV. Who is he going to pick? Sydney, the one he has zero chemistry with that stands up for her friends, or Maria, the one he makes out with every chance he gets? The suspense. On Lexi's dinner date, Lexi lets Joey know about her health and that she has stage five endometriosis, which means that she may not be able to have kids. But he's on some king behavior and says there are other options if that's what they eventually decide they want and then they can discuss it down the line. I shouldn't ever make someone run away or be afraid of being in a relationship with Lexi because there's so much more to Lexi Thank than you. just that. That's the right answer, Joey, and now everyone knows why you are The Bachelor. The group date is underway, and Joey leads the women to a couple of knights in the middle of a sword fight, where the ladies learn that they're all about to become knights. I'm gonna train you to be knights like me. Ooh. Women can be knights, too. Ooh. Who's ready to fight for Joey? Me! They run out dressed like knights, screaming and waving around their swords. The date is generally pretty lame, until we are introduced to the sausage wheel. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Catch a sausage using only your mouth. No hands. You can't move away from the wheel until you've retrieved the sausage in your mouth. Since the women are forced to grab flying sausages with their mouths in order to get more time with Joey, they are literally jumping into the air and slamming their faces into these sausages. Anything for ABC, the family channel. But no one slams their face more than Autumn, who ends up winning the group date for getting smacked with the most sausages. And it feels pretty damn good. Wow looking over the ocean, it really is just so beautiful. Elsewhere, Sydney, Maria, and Lexi are all awkwardly hanging out. When the envelope comes and announces the two-on-one we've all been waiting for. And Maria, meet me on the water. Love, Joey. That sounds nice. Back at the group date, Jess announces that she's falling for Joey, but he looks like he's falling asleep. Eventually, the group date Rose goes to Kelsey T. Her one-on-one -on -one time was very sweet, and they seem to have a good connection. He even says there's just something about her in his confessional. Every single time in a group setting with Kelsey T being on the forefront of my mind. That is, again, the end to another amazing day with all of you. And finally, it's time for the most awkward two-on-one -on -one date in the history of polyamory. Maria is nervously laughing and cracking jokes while Sydney sits in sullen silence. She's cracking jokes, and I cannot bring myself to do that. 
Joey takes Sydney to the side first, and Sydney uses her time to talk about how Maria makes the women uncomfortable, and that Maria told Leah to shut the bleep up after the pool party. And then she told Leah to shut the up. Many people in the house heard it. It was with a group. I heard it. Leah brought it up again. And like, I can guarantee that like. Joey then takes Maria aside and Maria is visibly angry at what is going on and gets hated when Joey brings up Sydney's allegations. Is that something that you remembered happening or that was something that did it? Absolutely not. Okay. I would never say that. First of all, that's just so vulgar. It's just so like out of, no. The producers refuse to give us any receipts to prove what happened like they do in The Real Housewives. They must really like Maria. After talking to both of the women, Joey has no idea who to believe. I feel like I might be more confused than I was going into today now. I still don't really know the truth of what's happened. So it's very hard for me to put this drama behind. So they continue on with a date night. And I have to say, Maria walks in wearing a dress that will make Joey regret all of his life choices if he does not choose her. After their three-way dinner date, Joey asks the women if either of them sees a future with him. And while Sydney doesn't hesitate to say yes, Maria says, at first, I wanted you, but now that you believe these troublemakers, I'm not really sure. And that's good enough for Joey, cause Maria is the one getting a rose. Sung from like the heavens. It was just such a beautiful moment. At the women's hotel room in Malta, a producer dramatically walks in and grabs Sydney's luggage, indicating to the women that she's been eliminated. A lot of Sydney's friends are bummed because they've also seen the wrath of Maria and they're not going to let Sydney's elimination go in vain. In fact, later at the cocktail party before the rose ceremony, Leah feels upset that Maria and some of the girls are just having fun and living life. Meanwhile, Sydney is gone. Leah gets pretty upset and decides to turn her frustration on Medina because Medina was friends with Sydney, but now seems to be buddy buddy with her arch nemesis Maria. It's frustrating that one second she's, you know, team Sid, and the second Maria walks in, she's voicing how. The conversation quickly turns against Leah when Medina lets her know that she's navigating the situation the best she can, and she's not going to be mean to someone just because she isn't friends with her friend. I'm doing it. Is I just want, like, I just want to give like clarity. You don't have to understand how. It. You don't have to understand how I'm navigating this journey. I don't understand how you're doing or any other girls, but I'm not pulling them aside to tell them they should do it. Which is the glaringly obvious difference between Leah, who is a 23-year-old without a fully formed prefrontal cortex and Medina, who's 31 and an actual adult. Medina and Maria have a discussion and she lets Maria know that Leah is upset with her for talking to Maria. And that in turn upsets Maria because she thinks that everyone is against her. And then I still get brought up. It's like, I can't win with these women. Um, when I'm quiet, they don't like me. When I talk, they don't like me. So if I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Meanwhile, Leah decides to use her time with Joey to tell him very sweetly that while she totally trusts his decision making, she was just a little bit surprised by the result of who was eliminated. Um, I think honestly, like, if I'm being like completely real, I, a lot of us were shocked mm -hmm. just because of like the words that were said. Mean meanwhile, Maria is having a mental breakdown because she thinks that no one in the house likes her. Leah's upset that other girls embrace me. This, I, I, I'm out. Well, that ends part one of week four of The Bachelor. Are you team Sydney or team Maria? And who do you think will be eliminated in part two? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and make sure you hit that like and subscribe so you can stay in the loop with Fleek Reality. Thanks for watching.